I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on best strategies for solving algebra problems, especially when it comes to multiple choice questions. Now, at times, you need to answer the questions less than 30 seconds. It takes about 5 seconds to read the question also. It is extremely difficult unless you learn the techniques. So, in this particular video, we'll take up 10 examples and in these 10 examples, we will see how to identify what to be substituted to get the result in 10 seconds. Now, if you grasp this particular technique, you're going to save a lot of time on at least 25% of your test questions. And then you can spend more time on the ones which need about a minute or more. That sounds perfectly fine, right? Isn't it? Okay, so if you have any doubts or questions, you can always email me on the address given here. Question number seven, just a sample given here, but we are now going to look into all 10 questions first, and then I'll give you the tricks. Let's begin with the very first question. There are two in every page. Since we really don't need space to solve, we will identify the correct type of substitution. So here, you are given x plus y equals to 2x and you need to find the value of x over x minus z plus z over y minus z. As I read, if you know, you can apply a substitution, get the right answer and move on. Question number two is, if x square plus 1 equals to 2x, then find x to the power 40 plus x to the power 39 plus x to and so on till 1, which is x to the power of 0. Question number three here is, if x plus y plus z equals to six, then value of x minus one whole cube plus y minus two whole cube plus z minus three whole cube is what? Four choices are again given to you. Question number four, x over three plus three over x is equal to two. Find the value of x cube, right? Question number five, if a equals to q plus r, b equals to p plus r, c equals to p plus q, and p cube plus q cube plus r cube minus 3 pr equals to 4, then find the value of a cube plus b cube plus c cube minus 3abc. Four choices. Extremely difficult question. Question number six. If square root of a square plus b square plus ab plus square root of a square plus b square minus ab equals to 1, then find the value of 1 minus a square times 1 minus b square. Question number 7. If a square minus bc over a square plus bc plus b square minus ca over b square plus ca plus c square minus ab over c square plus ab equals to 1. Then find the value of a square over a square plus bc plus b square over b square plus ca plus c square over c square plus ab. So they have some kind of symmetry and we'll see how to solve such questions with correct substitution. Question number eight here is, if one over one plus a plus one over one plus b plus one over one plus c is two, then find the value of a over one plus a plus b over one plus b plus c over one plus c. So you can see that both substitutions for seven and eight could be very similar, right? The last two questions for you are, if a plus b plus c equals to 0, then find the value of a square plus b square plus c square divided by a square minus bc. And the last question here is, if a cube plus b cube equals to 9 and a plus b equals to 3, then find the value of a to the power 4 plus b to the power of 4. I hope you find these questions useful and important. Now, such questions you can always see in test papers, especially for multiple choice test papers where time is very critical. Now, let us see how to substitute, save time and get the solution of such questions within few seconds. So in question number one, first I will show you the technique and then I will also show you the way of solving it, right? Okay, so the technique here is we have x over x minus z plus z over y minus z. What happens when I write z equals to, I want to write z equals to zero. So if I write z equals to zero, then this becomes zero, that becomes zero. I get x 
over x, right? Because that is 0 plus 0. And that is definitely equal to 1. And so my answer is 1. See how fast you can do it. As soon as you put 0 here for z, you know, this is 0. That means everything goes away. This is 0. You are left with x over x, which is 1. So you immediately get your answer. Correct? But if you don't know this substitution, how are you going to solve this? Now let's look into that also. And that is also a good strategy. You could write the equation as x plus y equals to z plus z. Then you get x minus z equals to take y on this side. Because we have x minus z and y minus z in the denominator, I'm trying to isolate them. And that's what I think I could do. So we could have z minus y here, but we have y minus z. So I could write this as x minus z equals to minus of y minus z. Well, now I could substitute it right there and get something with common denominator. Since we have same denominator, we could actually add them, right? So let's add them. So what we get here is x over we'll retain this as x minus z plus z over. This becomes negative of uh, x minus z because this is y minus z, right? This is negative. So negative of x minus z, correct? So if you add them with common denominator of x minus z, you get x minus z in the numerator also. That makes it negative, right? And that is indeed equal to 1. So you could solve this question in about a minute correct if you know the right method but the idea here is if you know the substitution you save at least 30 seconds and that is very critical for such papers so i hope you appreciate it so for rest of the questions i'll not tell you how to solve and some are so difficult that i cannot solve right so i'll just go for substitution but i hope the point is clear right okay now let's look into the tricks involved to make substitution so we have second question, which is x squared plus 1 equals to 2x, and we need to find the value of all this. Well, whenever you have such a situation, you could substitute x as equal to 1. So as soon as you do x equals to 1, you know 1 plus 1 is 2, right? So that makes the equation true. Now that gives you this formula here. 1 to the power of anything is equal to 1. So that means all these are 1s for you. Now you need to only count the number of terms. The exponent here is 40, 39, 38, and definitely this is 1. So that means we have 40 terms here, right? So that means these are all 40 terms, right? Plus 1, and therefore the answer is 41. Does it make sense to you? Correct? So the critical thing here is what will make this true for x? So if you have that situation, you know, 1 plus 1 is 2 and 2 times 1 is also 2. So that is an excellent substitution for such type of questions. Now, question number 3 is very scary. But here is a neat thing about it. If you have three numbers adding up to 6, these numbers could be 1 plus 2 plus 3. Now, these are very critical numbers as you know them, right? So their sum is 6. So you could substitute this value. As soon as I substitute 1 here, we know 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 3 is also 0, right? So we get three zeros to be added up, right? But here, we do not have 0 as one of our answer. How do we match it? Well, substituting 1 in D for x, 2 for y, and 3 for z will make these three factors 0. So this will result into 0. So that is how you're going to solve this particular question. I hope the criteria is very clear, right? Now, let's look into the next question, which is of the type x over 3 plus 3 over x equals to 2. Then find the value of x to the power of 3, right? Now, how do you get 2? Well, 1 plus 1 is equals to 2. And to get 2, I have to substitute x equals to 3 in this case. As soon as I substitute 3, I know what 3 cube is, which is 27. And so option D is the right option. Now, these questions could be of any kind. So if I have any number here, let's say x over any number capital N plus any other number over x equals to 2, I know my substitution is N equals to x or x equals to N, whatever the case may be. Only then you get 1 plus 1 equals to 2. Does make sense. Question number 5 here is, 
we are given a equals to q plus r b equals to p plus r c equals to p plus q and all this is there now such big questions could be solved if you substitute zero for something correct so let's try it out now we have so many terms here if i substitute let us say r equals to zero q equals to zero then we are trying to figure out this value right so uh, well if i say r equals to zero and q equals to zero in that case what happens to a ultimately we have to find what a q plus b q plus c q minus 3 a b c is right so if i say r equals to zero then we know a equals to q and in this case b equals to p and in this case c equals to p plus q so c equals to p right but we substitute q also as zero that means a is also equal to zero correct so what we are given here is that a equals to zero b equals to p c equals to p now we need to check whether it works here or not right so once we get this we need to check whether it works here or not now, well in this case if i say r is zero right so r is zero q is zero q is zero and then um, r and q are zero that means this is also zero that means what that means that p q is equal to four so we also get the value of p with the third condition right so we know that a is zero b is p c is p and p q is four it makes sense we are talking about all the cubes here okay perfect in that case what will be a q plus b q plus c q minus 3 a b c well a is zero right so we'll substitute our values back here this is the most complicated question right so a will be zero b equals to p q c is also equal to p q and a is zero so that means this is minus zero so this particular expression is equals to two times p q and we know p cube is four so we get this as two times four which is equal to eight and so we get c as our correct answer does it make sense to you now imagine if you have to solve this question by a particular method or something like this well it is nearly impossible to do in such kind of test perfect but with right substitution you could actually do it in less than a minute right i'm not saying in few seconds this may need a lot of work in spite of doing substitution okay so you should know at least the technique right question number six here is we need to work with the square roots of two numbers and get one well what should we do substitution the two terms have b in it when we see that we'll substitute b equals to zero to make our problem very simple so we'll substitute b equals to zero is it okay as soon as you substitute b equals to zero these terms vanish what do you get you get square root of a square which is actually a right and then again you get here plus square root of a square which is again a equals to one that means that two times a equals to one or that gives you a equals to half now once you know equals to half you can actually solve this question easily now let us see how to solve it so we get this question as one minus half square okay times 1 minus 0 since b is 0 right so now to solve this question this part is 1 and therefore this is equal to 1 minus 1 over 4 which is 3 over 4 do you see that so in spite of substitution you might have questions which may require a lot of calculation to be done these questions are the ideal questions which make or break your cases do you understand so these two are the critical questions of my set of 10 now let's get into the question number seven well i displayed that right in the beginning it looks scary but really speaking it is one of the simplest questions which you can get now here what substitution should i make well there are a lot of c's here right so let's substitute c equals to zero as soon as substitute c equals to zero see what happens so we get this c's cancelled away they become zero do you see that so so we are left with a square over a square which is one 
b square over b square which is also 1 but here we get minus 1 right so we do get that equal to 1 so this is true so we have verified that the substitution c equals to 0 really works since we do equate the equation as 1 plus 1 minus 1 as equals to 1 right so so we are perfectly fine with c equals to 0 let's do this here so as soon as I substitute c equals to 0 here, I get this term as 0. So we know this is 0. This is 0. So that means this is equal to 1. This is 0. This is equal to 1. So we get 1 plus 1, 2 as our answer. Do you see how we have done it? That is a good way of doing a substitution and getting your answer in the test paper. Correct? Now, the last question on this page, question number 10, and then we have two more to go. Here is if 1 over 1 plus a plus 1 over 1 plus b plus 1 over 1 plus c equals to 2, what should we substitute this as? Well, clearly, we'll substitute c equals to 0. If I substitute c equals to 0, I get 1 plus 1 here. But I have to make this somehow equals to 2. How can I do it? Well, if c is 0, I could put a and b as equal to 1, right? So a equals to b equals to 1. So if I do that, I get this question as half plus half plus 1, and that is indeed 2. So we have identified that this is perfect, right? So whenever you have this to make fractions, half plus half is 1, is good to remember. So that becomes our key. Now, once we substitute here, then c equals to 0 makes the whole thing as 0. But here, if I substitute b and a as 1 and 1, I get 1 over 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, which is as good as half plus half, which is 1. And therefore, we get option b as the right option. Does it? So I think now you can see the page very clearly. So take your time to understand when to substitute 0 and when to substitute 1, right? Now here are our last two questions. You have learned all the techniques to do substitution. I would like you to pause the video now, answer this question with substitution, and then look into my suggestions. So we have all this equal to zero. If I have to make this zero, I could make one of the term as zero, the other term as one and minus one. That gives me zero. So what I have done here, I'm saying a equals to one, b equals to minus one, c equals to zero. Let me substitute these values here. So I get the squares will be positive, right? So we get 1 plus 1 plus 0 over this becomes a, which is 1, and b times c will be 0. So we get 2 over 1, which is equal to 2. So the answer is c. Perfect. Next question here is a cube plus b cube equals to 9. a plus b is 3. Then find a to the power of 4 plus b to the power of 4. Well, we could do 1 plus 2 equals to 3. That means a equals to 1, b equals to 2. But you need to check whether this works or not. Well, 1 cube plus 2 cube, right? So it is 1 plus 8, it is equals to 9, it works. Once you check that, then it's good to practice here. So what you get here is a is 1 so 1 to the power of 4 plus 2 to the power of 4 which is 1 plus 16 and so the answer is 17 so that is how you get your solution so i hope with this you learn all the techniques of making the right substitution and getting the answer within few seconds i hope you understand and appreciate how critical this particular exercise is i would like you to go through this video once again Understand all the situations that will give you at least 25% test questions and it will save a lot of time for you to solve the difficult questions. I hope it makes sense. Feel free to write your comments, make suggestions, share my videos with your friends and if you like and subscribe, that would be great. And also, don't hesitate to send your queries to my email. I normally answer within 48 hours. Thanks and all the best.